This is Let's Talk About Magnum P.I., the podcast from fans for fans of Magnum P.I. And we're back with a new episode. Hello, guys. Hello. I'm back. I feel like it's been a long time since we've done one of these. Uh, yeah, just two weeks, but there's a whole world between these two weeks, at least for me. Yeah. No, I've, me too. I've been social. <laughs> <coughs> I've actually been out and socialized with people. I've been at a party. That's like such a weird concept for me right now because of everything. (laughs) Yeah, it was so weird to be like, there's a lot of people around me right now. What's (laughs) going on? But fun. Oh, so much fun. I love the fact that the convention, I I was at a convention. I was at MagicCon in Germany. Um... It's a no-touch convention, so you're not meant to touch the actors. But somehow they apparently forgot to tell the actors that. (laughs) Yes, I know you had quite the experience. Oh, which, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, let's just say, um, the moment you walk into the photoshoot room with Clive Stanton and you're, like, being squished against the man. Not your day's going pretty well. Not that you initiated that. You've got no choice. <laughs> He's squishing you. It makes your day. It, it makes my weekend, honestly. That guy um, was not on my list <laughs> of actors I wanted to see. And then he was just like, let's just hijack the entire con. I wish I could have been there. Oh, me too. Me too. You would have had a lot of fun, especially with the covert uh, cosplays that I had that turned out to be fucking epic timing. I saw the pictures, and I was very, very impressed with her cosplay. Probably (laughs) halfway across the world. Friday, um, I I put on a Magnum cosplay Friday, so full-on Aloha shirt and, you know, the ring and everything. And it turned out there was a beach shooting on Friday that I could attend with an amazing actor and all my friends. And they're like, it's beach party theme. Like, I'm not even going to change for that. <laughs> I'm already got it perfect. Yeah. And then day two was my plan on doing the Higgy cosplay. And I was like, I should probably get myself a Magnum stand in. Pick Clive standing for it, and the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, and I can say it worked out very beautifully from what I saw. Yeah, he's a little bit too tall for Magnum, though. Well, but- Tom Selleck was really tall, so I guess we could we could say that it kind of worked because of that. But he's yeah, not. He's not. There's no our mustache Magnum, involved. But- <laughs> I hate the mustache. And I also want to point out that we are. In Higgy attire this evening as well. Yeah, wearing the Higgy cosplay. We both kind of are. I was wearing it all day today because it gives me strength throughout my day. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I've got none of that. I've got no strength. Well, I brave face it, as I'm sure (laughs) you are aware. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. I didn't. I didn't. I, I just cried at work. <laughs> oh, I, I, I've been crying all week at stage. So, Which, like, this again, episode really hit, hit hot. Yeah, for both of us, I think. For a lot of people, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah. I saw the reactions on Twitter, and... I mean, rightfully so. I think it was very well done. Mm-hmm. Um, and I... And I I, yeah, it, it hit me, um, I, I don't even really know where to start, (laughs) to be honest. (laughs) Let's Um, start with saying how impressive it is that they always handle these sensitive episodes really well. Yeah, yeah. This is also the second time that they've handled, um, the topic of suicide, um, and... I think that both... Pardon? And bullying. And bullying, yeah. Um, And they have handled it, like you said, very well both times. Um, And 
I also love the fact that at the end of this episode and the end of the pre the other episode where they discuss the discuss suicide, they have the um the number for the the hotline for suicide prevention, which I think is an amazing addition to an already very powerful episode because it it really does encourage like people to get help, right? On top and of it, we see an amazing and strong character actually go to therapy. Mm-hmm. Happily dubbed by me, Sarah Piggy. Yeah, which I adore. When you I first like said Sarah that to Piggy. me, I was perfect. And I think Sarah Piggy, I feel like I can relate, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to her, because when she went in and she was like, I I don't want to do this, like, I'm... I made a mistake. I I'm not one to open up. Like I'm not very good at discussing. And then the therapist said, you know, my feelings. And it, it's it's funny because I think I said it to you even. Um, you did that. Yeah. Um, that that would be m- like my main issue with going to therapy because full disclosure. Um, before finding out about this whole storyline before the press release um i (laughs) was and still am considering going to a therapist myself um so when i saw this episode i actually saw a lot of me in higgy and i'm sure i'm not the only one that would be feeling that way which again is a testament to the writing because i feel like like you said they sent such a strong you know, independent character into this situation, and she was, like, I don't want to say humanized, because I I don't find that Higgy is ever not humanized, like, I always find that she's, like, a character that's very humanized, but she, she was, like, really relatable on a, on a certain level in that, like, situation, at, at least to me, and I'm sure to quite a, like, quite a large part of the audience, and I just, again, kudos to the writers on that because it just shows the reality of what a lot of people think yeah you know even people even people who really do want to go and go to therapy and and they just you know get stopped by themselves or they just get there or and they don't really know where to start exactly so kudos to the writers i think that they handled that quite well yeah, um, did. they did. They they have lit amazingly. It, it's I think it's really the assistant reaction from her that really struck home for me in that moment because I would be just as assistant if therapy was an option for me. Full disclosure, it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a bit. Um... It's a bit tricky in Germany from what you've told me. No, 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 no. It's not technically tricky. It's it's really not technically tricky. It's the fact that I'm, I'm for all intents and purposes, very high functioning. So even my doctor doesn't see anything wrong with me. Which I think that's like kind of a broken system that like the doctor has to say... Oh, I could I could go around the doctor if I wanted to. I just don't want to because I, oh. he's. Here's the thing. Um, he's the main doctor for me, and I trust that guy with literally my life, and it, it's proven. And he needs to know everything about therapy should I be in medication and everything and like that so I really want him on board Mm. I could go around him though if I wanted to but I I want him on board for it the reason that I really want him to know everything about this shit Mm. yeah I I see what you're saying like that it's important to have like your doctor fully understand because I guess because like here our therapists are, like, completely separate from our family doctors unless we go to a family doctor or, exactly. you know, whatever. And, the same and they And they tell us specifically. 
Um, it's the same thing. That we need to go, but, like, mm-hmm. I, I could reach out to a therapist tomorrow and say, hey, I, I you know, I need some help, and it's I want to see It's the same. I could technically reach to, out to anybody, but there's also the issue that I'm allergic to a couple of medications, and that, um, and we're not entirely sure which ones yet. Mm-hmm. Like, how, how far it goes, uh, <laughs> and some medications land at me in hospital before, so I'd rather not do anything or have a doc- have a therapist be able to prescribe me shit without my doctor being like, that's probably not a good idea because she could collapse and, and have seizures and shit. Yeah. So, yeah, um, it is important, you know, in in most situations i would say it's very important to like have your doctor consult on it for sure it's not it's not something to be taken lightly yeah if there's any chance there is some medication involved which in my case there is a chance um the doctor the the family doctor needs to know this seriously even everybody who's listening, even if you're just going to the ER for something else and you took drugs, tell them. Because they're not there to be like, oh, that's illegal. They're there to make sure they're not giving you shit that has cross-reaction with the drugs that kill you by accident. So mm-hmm. tell them whatever the fuck you took. Even if it's just, even if it's just like, I took painkillers. Trust me, there's painkillers that they need to know about because they're thinning your blood and... You don't want to be open on an OR table with blood thinners in your bloodstream. Yeah. And them not knowing about it. Yeah. So. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a tricky topic and I think. Or on a blood donation chair and them not knowing about it and you bleeding all over the floor. Yeah. That does not sound that. fun. It's not fun. It's not fun. <laughs> I actually have some nice little bruises and thing on my arm from a blood test I had this morning. <laughs> Speaking of blood. Um, but yeah, no, overall message, guys, always be safe yeah. when you do anything related to your body in any way, shape, or form. Um, and it, it never hurts to be uh, fully open to your doctor. Because he's supposed to know that shit. He's, he, it's his mm-hmm. job. And they're there for a reason, right? They're, and they're, they, you know, I'm, I guarantee you, it's nothing they haven't heard before. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Unless they've, it's they've heard it all. they really haven't heard before, and then they're, like, really interested in your case. Yeah. And then you probably made their entire week because they actually get something exciting. <laughs> Trust me, doctors yeah. get, or at least the doctors I'm involved with, get really exciting for when they get <laughs> stuff they haven't seen before. I can, like little kids on Christmas. It's kind of cute. I can personally vouch for that on my end as well. <laughs> they see something they've never seen before, or you have something, and you <laughs> present with only, let's say... One out of ten symptoms, and they can't quite figure out how to classify you, or they tell you, (laughs) which happened to me, uh, they're, you know, they're like, oh, the test came back, and, um, you're fine, no problems, whatever, and then six weeks later, your parents get a phone call saying, we got the more in-depth genome testing back, and you're not so okay. You just have a very little amount of it, if that makes sense. <laughs> it does. And, uh... I, yeah. uh, I can say that my, uh, doctor is probably kind of excited to get my next blood test. Because my body has this weird thing where it, if, if it gets a vaccination... <laughs> any form of vaccination, usually, it just runs with it. So I have, like, vaccinations, um, hepatitis and shit, 
where you have to have refreshers usually before you go to places like Kenya and shit. And my doctor was like, hey, was last time I was like, hey, um, it's been like over 15 years or so. Um, I was like, hey, let's test if you, you might still have enough so I don't have to give you the shot. He tested me and my parents and then he was like, yeah, well, there is a scale. And the scale, you're so high in antibodies that it's way above the scale. So my body just ran with the, you know, with producing antibodies at an extreme, and I haven't had a hepatitis uh, shot since because still way above the scale. Wow. Yeah, and so as you can tell, guys, we're getting really personal tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there's um, yeah, there's other antibodies where my body was just like, hey, we can build this shit, and they're just. <laughs> obsessively apparently building antibodies for this shit that's kind of fucking awesome though yeah. not gonna lie so i'm pretty cool. sure pretty sure that guy is really excited to get his hands on my blood test for the corona antibodies <laughs> to see hey maybe we didn't never have to vaccinate that wouldn't, woman again wouldn't that be amazing i wouldn't be surprised because really my buddy's doing weird shit i mean cool <laughs> shit too yeah, it would be weird if my buddy for once did what I was supposed to do. Pretty fucking cool and awesome and lucky in a way. But Yeah, it it I, I out of my paternal side, my buddy does medicinal weird shit in the good versions. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> lucky. I'm yeah. I get the good weird shit. <laughs> That's awesome. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> I got, I got, like, dealt a genetically bad hand, and apparently my buddy was like, nah, let's turn it into a good hand. I mean, the universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's great. get back to the episode. To the episode. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Heavy shit from us. Heavy shit from them. We heard, We learned that he got bullied, which yeah. doesn't even surprise me. Yeah, I kind of always thought that she wasn't. I mean, she's also said I that she thought, wasn't the most popular girl and all yeah. that, so I, I thought kind of always suspected. It, exactly. It, from that moment on, I was like, okay, yeah, she got, she got bullied. Yeah. Luckily, we got a confirmation for that, which also sucks, because being bullied mm. sucks. Yeah. Again. <laughs> yeah. First hand experience. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's great that we also heard from her that her mom was so great to her, you know, that she supported her yeah. and everything. Again, um, first hand experience. My mom was great. Yeah. <laughs> My mom was half, I'd <laughs> say. Um, my Someone mom had like, to be great for me. My, my, my grandma was shit about it. And I lived with my grandma at that time. Yeah. Well, yeah, most, of the, most of the time of the day, because my mom was working. So I was mm -hmm. only coming home late at like six. Yeah, my mom, my mom worked a lot, too, but she used to just kind of go, like, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me kind of thing, but... No, you know, no, no, no. Like, I, I mean, like, that's kind of, like, her, like, what she threw at me. <laughs> but, yeah, um... <laughs> I, I'm gonna go with uh, a sentence that I've been told at the convention, or saying that I've been told at the convention. The universe gives the strongest people the hardest challenges because it's the only way they grow. I have to say, when you first messaged me that, I bawled I... my, <laughs> my eyes out after that. It, it's like, I, I was downstairs, and then I was... You know, <laughs> had to go up. I was like, "Is someone there?" Luckily, nobody of my friends saw me. I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I mean, I, like, 
I, yeah, I mean, you and I, you and I talk, like, all the time, so. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know it's been a tough week, <gasps> I think, <laughs> yeah, for yeah, both yeah, of yeah, us, yeah. to say the least. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, trying to not think about it, if I'm being honest. <laughs> on That's the bright side, side. on the bright side, let's stay personal for a second. It looks everything's pointing towards the fact that uh, come December, I will not be in Germany anymore, and I will not be in Canada anymore. <laughs> yeah, looking for apartments right now in Hawaii. Yay! Yeah, so. <laughs> Look out for that, guys. Could be pretty fun. There could be Hawaii episodes on the horizon now. Woohoo. Yeah. And some inside scoop, maybe. But uh, yeah, we wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're hoping, but, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we've got exciting shit in the working was behind the scenes that have me nervous and have me <laughs> really fucking nervous all week and kind of insecure she can attest to that <sighs> yeah. it, it's one of these things where like can we just fucking finalize this thing because mm -hmm. i hate the the you know hate that it's like up there in flux. and not in flux. And, and you know not not finalized yet. Yeah. It's, I'm not um, one to be like, I, I can't not finish it. I want this shit finished for my peace of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I'm with you. I feel you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have a task for that still. Um, yes. <laughs> but it kind of needs to happen first. No, 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 you have to figure that thing out before it's finalized, so we can be like, okay, yeah. I mean, I know how to do it, but... <laughs> Good. <laughs> and I promise, guys, for all of you listening, we're not crazy. Uh, we are crazy! Hi! But not with two, this! We're two TV show fans doing a podcast. I think that's the definition of crazy. But we're not crazy when it comes to this, because this shit is not crazy. When it it's just making out. us crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's just making us a little crazy. Um, <laughs> but you know what? It's keeping us sane at the same time, in a way. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Um, um, we haven't can we talk about... about Yes, we can. You saw it. Um, can we talk about the fact that when Magnum spoke to Higgy about that MI6 part where she was like, oh, I'm going to contact my old friends, right? Or like, I'm going to contact somebody. And he was like, you could just, you know, come out and say it, right? That it was MI6. I was just screaming at the TV like, it's okay, Higgy. Tell him about what's going on with MI6. It's okay. It's okay. He won't be mad. Right? And well, I just, I feel like that. He won't be mad and he won't jeopardize it. That's the thing that I really just. Woman! He, yeah. Cone of silence. If you tell him, Trust you him. have a confident. Confidant? Trust him. And he'll, he'll keep shot. They can fucking torture that guy. And he's like, I never heard about this before. Yeah. I, and and he will move heaven and earth for her. He will, if she needs help with anything, he will be there. Like, 100%. And I think the reason that the writers put that line in is because they need to start planting the idea in Higgy's head that either he's going to figure it out or she needs to tell him. Right? And and she needs to understand, like, she needs to realize for herself that, like you said, he won't tell anyone. He 
will respect the cone of silence and he will help her and he will be there for her and he will not jeopardize it for her so it's safe for her to tell him and she needs to know this and to me that's actually something that i find the writers like i know why the writers are doing it it's because of like suspense and whatever but i do kind of think that it's kind of a writing mistake because like in terms of their characters because we know that they have this thing about not keeping secrets from each other, being totally honest with each other, having that cone of silence, being best friends, you know? And, and the fact that Higgy even said to Eve in the very first episode, like, he is a good detective. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep this from him, right? Like, I mean, I mean, again, I know why they're doing it. I know it's a writing tactic, I know. But at the same time, like, it's not very... Like, I don't think... Higgy, like, I don't really think it's, I don't want to say it's out of character for her, because, again, we don't really know, because it's not really, but, like, I do, I do feel like part of her would tell him, part of like, her I, and I, wants to. yeah, and I feel like it's weird that she's not, you know, like, it, I don't think it's out of character, but I feel like it's weird. It's not necessary. Okay, um, I'm I'm coming from a totally different idea. The one thing that's changed about this situation is the fact that she's being manipulated big time, and they're hanging several lives over her. And that's the only thing that keeps her from telling Magnum. If there was no lives involved, what's that she woman go me. straight up to Magnum and be like, "Hey, MI6 is trying to blackmail me." But I feel like part of her also knows, like, even though they are dangling, like, the lives in front of her, like, like, part of me is, like, if you tell Magnum, nothing bad will happen, because he's not gonna go blabbing it to everybody else, right? Like, it's, it's, like, it's safe to tell him, and you're going to need him, you know? Question. Do you think... Uh, there could be a little bit of denial on Wolf too. I just realized. I think everybody, every fan, or next to every fan, realized that there is a deeper level of manipulation involved with MI6 because she's been locked out of her contact really strongly before doing all the vaccination thing. So there was. I I I think they manipulated her into the uh, into the situation because they want something specifically from her on Hawaii which you know really looks like it um and and the current task seems like more like a test of will she do it and will will she keep her mouth shut towards Magnum I think the whole manipulation thing is something that might subconsciously be at the back of her mind and if she told Magnum he'd see right through it like, mm. he wouldn't realize the timeline doesn't fit as... Doesn't add up. Doesn't add up to, oh, yeah, you got... You know, she was watched before. He would realize that, like, like that. Yeah, I think you're right. So I there might be, like, it. like a little bit of, if I tell him, he dropped that truth bomb on me. and uh. So... <laughs> question for you. Oh. Um, <laughs> and I think we've already answered this, but we, I think we need to answer it on the podcast. Um, so. Oh, shit, but this is kind of a spoiler. We're not in that section yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> spoiler alert. Close your ears if you don't want to hear it. So we know that in episode six, Higgy gets a new assignment from MI6. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was in the press release, it was in the cheat tweet. Do you think episode 6 is the episode that Magnum finds out? Whether or not it's the end of MI6, that's no, a completely it's not different... not the end of MI6. That's, I agree, that's a completely different question, but do you think it's the episode where Magnum finds out? Yeah. I personally yep. think yes. I do. I think whatever it is, I think... Somehow, either he figures it out or she tells him. Or she um, yeah. I, I, 
I fully believe that it will be episode 6 that it, like, comes out. I don't think it's the end of MI6, though, but I think no. it's the episode where Magna finds out. I, I, I personally think the MI6 thing is going to be a huge um, factor throughout the entire season. I also think that we ha will have a character that's going to come back and slap the other characters in the ass for having done something in the past. <clears throat> Sebastian Roche. You can't cast hmm. that guy and not be like, hey, he's just in one scene. The fuck? Why would you cast him then? So I'm like... <laughs> The last last episode's back back guy. My money's on last episode's back guy being back eventually. Could be, could very well be. Otherwise, I what don't know. The fuck are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how long MI six will last. Um, Me either. I I originally thought that it was gonna be episode eight was gonna be like the tie it all up kind of thing, but. I, I don't know. Like, I could. I don't. I could. I could see it steering towards my dream, and nobody else <laughs> heard about that dream yet. I at the convention where everything's completely mad, and I have weird dreams. I had a surprisingly unweird dream where, um, and it makes sense even if you think about it. Uh, where Higgy, um ends up killing someone for uh, MI6, and since MI6, not allow MI6 isn't allowed to operate in the US, they will deny that she's on their pay Working. payroll, um, so she'd be a criminal, and Magnum would obviously support her, so there is, I could actually see it happening that we're steering towards outlaw Mickey at the end of the season. And we're, we're being like, they have to flee. How do they get back to Hawaii to work again? What's happening to their business? Blah, blah. Or not. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I, I mean... Know. Uh, I mean... Why... I, something... Again, I could be totally wrong about this, but... Something is just kicking me and saying... That MI6 will not be in the back half of the season. I don't know why. I don't know what's in my brain. I could be totally wrong about that. They could be in like till there till the very end. We have no idea. But I don't know. There's something in my brain that's saying it's all over by like episode eight. I don't know if that's based on like pretty stories or there's nothing in what? pretty stories that I know fun. yeah so <laughs> another thing the black the black eye I was thinking about it a bit more from Ooh. that story from premiere night and something occurred to me oh okay. and, and it made me think that it most definitely is not Higgy with the black eye that it's just simply Purdy with a black eye. Um, they Who has a black eye on her? I thought it was I, on Drake. I, to be fair, mm, I thought it was on her, but then I didn't really see it on her. I don't know. Because she said, yes, that is a black eye, and it was like her. Yes. Um, but something occurred to me. Yes. Most Give of the time. The team. Most of the time, they are not allowed to show themselves in costume. Right? Unless, like, it's nondescript, like, you know, a regular Aloha shirt for Magnum. So if it was part of her costume, she technically would not have been allowed to show it. Because uh, it would have been giving it away. Because, yes, there are times that they can be, like, show what they're wearing because it doesn't really give anything away. Right? But, like, we know... F Okay. Yeah, but, okay. Spoilers. Let me let me be the, uh, the salt mine. I'm I'm the con constant salt mine here. Apparently, um, what would a black eye on Higgy give away? That Higgy had that a fight. Got hurt. Uh, that it she happened got hurt. like every other episode. That one I guy, know, but landed a lucky punch. 
I know, but that still gives something away. Like, I mean, there are times when, like, we know, we know something or whatever, and they're like, no, we can't post them in their (laughs) costume. Um, so, like, I'm thinking, um, again, spoiler alert, uh, (laughs) if you haven't heard, we're getting Little Rick. Um, and the mom of Little Rick made a post on Instagram and hashtagged at Magnum PI, um, and basically said in the comment, I can't show him in costume, but he's gonna play Little Rick, yada yada yada. So it's like, you're telling us what he's playing, but we can't see him? You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. But again, salt mine. Um, <laughs> everybody and their cow knows that he can, can fight, and that she does fight. And sorry, lucky punches are a thing. So th- yeah. there might just be like, I don't know. But like you said, and I agree with you. I hardly saw a if I even saw a black eye. So I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know what to believe, because I, I do know that Purdy does get pretty beat up when she does her stunts. I mean, she's posted pictures, and you can s- physically see the bruises on her. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking particularly to the reel that they did when they were reading, when they were all reading Robin's latest book before premiere night, and, you, and Higgins was doing the yoga pose, and you could see it on Purdy. She was like, she had a bunch of bruises, like, all along her thighs. Um... So, I mean, part of me was just like, if I, like, if it really was a black eye, like, she just got hurt doing mm-hmm. a stunt, right? Um, but like or you said, I just mean, I really, not. Or it's just really not matter to the episode and someone just landed a lucky punch. Yeah. So There's also things that. Things to look out for. Things <laughs> to look out for in episode eight, things guys. Things to answer. Is it? Higgy, who has a black eye, or is it Rick, or is it Rick. someone else, or what were we supposed to see? I don't know. I mean, yeah. Also, because, as you know, Chantal also posted a video from that exact scene, and you can clearly see Pretty's face, and she does not have a black eye, so... Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like we've been saying, I hardly saw it. I, I mean, I didn't see it at all, quite honestly. Like, I had to look at it a thousand times, and I'm still not even... Like, if she had not said, yes, that is a black eye, I wouldn't have even... Yeah. I wouldn't have even seen it, to be honest. Um, as someone who does makeup for cameras, that was... There, there was not much <laughs> makeup there, so a camera would not yeah. pick that up. Yeah. So... Could... All of this... Also- all of this going back to the MI6, when is it going to end part? <laughs> but Look hey, at us! We can't keep anything A train of today. thought. But hey, no, we're getting our points across, and that's what matters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, okay, all let, that let's, let's talk about accents. Oh, that American accent. We've. This is the second episode in a row where Higgy just... Switches accents like that. Yeah. Well, the switching of the accents last episode. (laughs) The switching of the accents last episode makes sense because she was supposed to play a woman from the south, so it made sense that she had a southern accent. This time, episode two. Well, but I mean, she didn't have to go American. Yes, but wouldn't you be like, "Are you sure you HPD? You sound British." Well, I mean, there could be Brits in HPD. There could be, but it's easier to sell the story if you're just, like, sound American. It's, like, less True. effort. True. Just switch to an American accent, no effort, nobody's gonna question it. So this is, this is the third time, uh, fourth time that Higgy has done an American accent. Fourth time. Yeah. We had the one where they played Mr. and Mrs. Marlowe at the hotel. We had in 113 when they went to go see Fiona. Um, uh, we so had... I, and then we had the one with the babysitter. If I, heard, 
completely off topic. Every time I hear the name Fiona, I think of the baby hippo. The baby hippo? Oh, you have not heard of Fiona the baby hippo. There was a baby hippo uh, hand raised in I don't even know what zoo, but she's adorable. She was so adorable. She them. learned to swim and everything and there was like on German television there was like weekly updates on baby hippo Fiona who's like in America or somewhere. But anyway, baby hippo Fiona is adorable. Cool. Look it up. You will not regret it. I always think, when I think of Fiona, I always think of, Shrek. um, no, I think of Fiona from Burn Notice, which I is, that. oh, good show, good show, um, I finished all seven seasons in, like, three months or something, anyway, Speaking of so, good show, uh, Clive Stan made me stop watching, uh, Vikings, and I'm like, okay, um, have you heard of a show before? <laughs> yes, Vikings. Oh, that's a show I haven't heard of in a long time, Vikings. <laughs> I, I even got I even got a shirtless picture of him signs. I'm like, okay, that should have tipped me off. That you, you you know you can pick pictures, and there was like <laughs> an overwhelming majority featured him not wearing a shirt. It should have tipped me off. It didn't, and I'm like, okay, um, yeah, he's allergic to shirts. I mean, there are worse things in this world. <laughs> I it, it's one thing that I kind of, as as a female, kind of regret about Magnum PI. There, none of them is allergic to a shirt. I know, I know. They give us J shirtless every once in a while, but it's just not enough. Yeah, and Rick's button allergy or incapability of buttoning Ugh. up, but it's I don't. Ah. Um. Nothing. Also, on that note. Petition to have Higgy read Chapter 9 and picture Magnum shirtless? Petition, naked. please, started. Naked? Yeah, okay, let's go with naked. Because her, at least in the vision of Magnum, like in Magnum's version of it, she was horny. Uh, so, in the book, I want to know. Horny. Uh, yeah, well, at least that's how Magnum interpreted and, and, it when he was reading it. But... Come on, uh, she looks into a mirror and goes, it's quite large. Quite large. Sorry, A, he's, he's naked, and B, Robin, for some reason, made Higgy very horny. So I want, I need to see Higgins' version of Chapter 9. I yes. have said it before, I will see it again. If we do not see this at some point in the season, I will be mad. If Chapter 9 does not make a comeback at some point in this season, we I need to know asked. what she thinks of Chapter 9. And now, actually now, would be the perfect timing because someone planted the seed of potentially having mag having feelings for Magnum and then having her go like, okay, I just read Magnum fucking me, so that doesn't help. Mm. Dr. Ogawa, I love her. Thank yeah. you! Yeah, speaking of love, I did not like Beth. I agree. I mean, I, I don't mind her, she's fine, but I am I just kept being like, ugh, Rachel. I just, to be honest with you, I didn't really see the point of Beth and that whole storyline. I I, like, I just really just kept being like, Rachel, Rachel, please don't go there. It doesn't work. Please don't do another yeah. Danny and Rachel get back together and have the weird. Yeah, not yeah. my thing. Some of you might love her. I know Sia likes her, and I can see why. I just don't. Oh yeah, I don't I mean I don't. I mean I don't hate her at all. Um, I just I yeah. I just didn't see the point. Yeah, you know, it, like I just I just kept being like, oh, Rachel. So there's like that's why I'm like Beth, the character herself, not that. Yeah. Also, I and, miss her. Yeah, I mean that that's just it, right? Like she wasn't horrible, but she also didn't really add anything, in my opinion. Then again, I'm also I'm also the one who doesn't like Kate. Kate? I don't like Kate. I don't like Kate either. I, I literally, when I was watching the episode, I went, fucking Cade. Like, I, 
here is the thing. He's too much of... He, I don't like the fact that we get, oh, he's, he's the... He's the amazing kid. He's the amazing hustler. He's refusing that thing. He's... And then he turns out to be that... To be sleeping in Mama Marianne. I'm just like... Mm -mm. Yeah. No, I don't... It's not... I, I, it's it, again, not catching. For me, again, at least. I, I... I mean, I... I think this season they're bringing in... A few too many characters if you ask me um <sighs> uh, Beth herself is a character that I can get behind bringing in it's just the storyline that doesn't make me team Beth uh, right. Cade so far is I don't see the point in him so far and yeah. usually I, I, I kind of need the, the point because currently he's just like Amazing worker, and then there's the drama the job. Of that uh, the drama about him sleeping in Laura Mariana, but it's not something that would and will impact me for the show. It's just for me. It's yeah. just, sorry, right now it's, it's just a waste of time. He's yeah, not even bringing. He's not even bringing comic relief. No, I know. I know. I. It's like I, I'm so not on board with that, and I, I no, get I that. There's people who are on board of that, and it's fine. If that storyline is something I really like, yay! Awesome! I just don't see the point yet. And if yeah, you see the I, point, I mean, tell me the point. Cause yeah, me too. Please. Please. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm assuming that they have a plan for him. Yeah, what, what could, po what could the what? plan possibly be? But what? That's the thing. What I could the know. plan possibly be with Kate? I don't know. He's he's really good. He needs a job. He gets mentored by TC, and then what? He just disappears like Mahele on five O. Yeah, it's honestly. Or he goes I, off and becomes a marine. Yeah. Wait. Or he has, or he has a shady past, um, which then doesn't coincide with who he is right now. He's like. Save, talk about saving the cat. He's just saved a cat and their mom and multiple kittens and a baby at the same time. Yeah, he just, I mean, uh, I don't I, know. I, 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 don't I know. can't see, I, can, I, I, I don't see where it's supposed to go. I don't see it either. Um, speaking of where things are going, do you think we will see Thera Higgy again? Therapy. Higgy. Therapy. Higgy. No. I don't either. I want to, but I don't think we will. Plain and simple, no. Um, I hope I'm wrong. Really, I hope I'm wrong. If you listen to this and I'm, I, I turn out to be wrong, yes, please gloat. <laughs> yeah. I, I want, like, I want to be wrong about this, but I, yeah. I don't see them bringing it back. They're, they're, I hate to say it, they don't necessarily have the best track record with keeping mm. up with injuries of any kind, and mm. mental health falls into that department for me, yeah. and yes, it, it, there's this consistent line of Magnum having experienced that stuff, and Hiki having the experience that stuff, yes, I don't see them doing, keeping up with the therapy, though. It might be Which different. is unfortunate. Which is unfortunate because I, I I think like we said before, it brings such awareness. Yeah. You know, and I and I think It might like, be mentioned. Like there might be a scene where Magnum's like, Oh, have you been an up therapist? But that's that's as far as I can see it go. And even that yeah. might not happen. Yeah. I think I mean I don't know. I just to me like, it was just, it was so powerful to see such a strong person yeah. going through that. And, and like I said before, for her to acknowledge it, I think, you know, that, I think for her to acknowledge that she needs help, I think is, is amazing, you know? And I, and I hope that they don't just ditch that, you know? Because she did, like, if you think about it, 
even in the span of the episode, she came so far, you know, like, just, like, from her being so hesitant to her agreeing to go back, yeah. right, and, and to have that discussion with Dr. Gawa, like, that just shows so much growth, strength, you know, it shows strength, and strength. It's, I keep saying it at work, um, there is, it takes a lot of strength to ask for help, and it takes a lot of strength to admit that you're wrong, and she asked for help, and listen, it takes really a lot of strength, especially if you're, like, around people, and Dr. Ogawa is a person. <laughs> Mm -hmm. To admit to any kind of person that you need help is fucking scary. Yeah. Yeah, no, I... <laughs> like I said before, uh, going through the exact same thing at the moment, I... There is a biological component to it, too. Mm. Weird that I know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I... The body is inherently wired to keeping you alive. Um, usually, showing your vulnerabilities doesn't necessarily promote staying alive. In in you know, in the oh, it makes you historic target. sense. Oh, by the way, can I go really off topic for a second? Do it. So at the convention, John Johnny Davy, who played Gimli on Lord of the Rings, um, had several panels, and in one of the panels, he explained why and how men came to view women as inferior, and explained how historically it came to be, and it makes so much sense. And I was like, initially when he started, I was like, oh my god, no, I cannot have this man explain to me right now. But <laughs> It's just, it makes so much sense, and it's really good, and he's really fucking respectful of women, and dude's amazing. Like, wow. He, he would be one of the people I would bow to. Anyway, and this is something that has been driving me insane this entire time, so I'm going to share it with all of you. <laughs> so, he is involved in some digs. I think even Jay Hernandez would love this little tidbit. <laughs> Feel, it feels like this kind of tip that uh, he would really enjoy. Um, so, when you look up uh, the remains of Neanderthals and these early humans, you find males that are like in their 40s, 50s, sometimes even in their 60s. The oldest female skeleton that you find is 30-something. And she would be considered like an old spinster usually female skeletons range around 25 years wow because a lot of them died in childbirth and then he's like if you look at it the men are so much older so their maids are are basically girls and now look at the emotional maturity and general wisdom that young girls can amass in their time span as opposed to 40, 50, 60 year old males. Of course, True. historically, women were viewed as inferior because they never had the chance to amass the wisdom and emotional maturity that the men had. And I'm just like, that makes so much sense. Yeah, it really it does. It actually really makes sense. Women die in childbirth and men don't. And, well, apparently that could easily explain why that historically was like that. But. Also shows you that hmm, times have changed. We're no longer dying at 25 years old. Oh my goodness, I would be on my deathbed right now if that was the case. So would I. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, cool, completely off-topic tidbit that I had to share with you guys because it was cool. Yeah, it was very interesting. What else? What else was in the episode? What else is in the next episode? Let's talk about that, because we didn't get a promo. No, because it's not for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Which is normal. It's normal not to get. Um, but it's the what? Should we go into the spoiler section? Um, just, uh, just going ahead of the spoiler section, you guys. Um, there is still going to be an episode of this show next week, and we're planning shit. 
Cool shit. Researching it's, cool shit. It's gonna be fucking epic. Prepare some candy. Mm-hmm. 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 Because you know we like our food. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> also, um, you should probably listen to it at night. Oh, oh, scary music, scary music. I mean, everybody who knows what day the episode comes out and okay, <laughs> all have an idea when that is, know what's going to happen mm-hmm. or what we're going to talk about. But stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, stay tuned. Like that. Okay, um, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, oh. everybody. Who doesn't want to hear the spoilers? Um... Turn the fuck away now. Um, you know, probably already did because we already talked about spoilers. <laughs> but n- now we've got more. So, shall we start with next week's, not next week, two weeks from now, November 5th, the synopsis, as yes. we did not get a promo. All right, let me find it. Okay, so it's called Till Death. And the, uh, the synopsis says, When Magnum and Higgins are hired by an anxious groom to look into his bride-to-be on the eve of their wedding, what they think is a simple case of cold feet turns into a web of lies and a life-or-death situation for Higgins. Also, TC makes a touching decision on how to help Cade on the CBS series Magnum P.I. So, that's your synopsis for episode 5. We also got a synopsis for episode 6, came out yesterday, and it says, it's called Devil on Your Doorstep, and it says, a journalist hires Magnum to track down his anonymous source after they mysteriously go dark, and Higgins receives a new assignment from MI6. Also, Rick's old friend comes to the island, but TC is suspicious of his motives. On the CBS original series, Magnum P.I., Friday, November 12th. So, those are the next two synopsis. I say, I'm not on board with the Rick storyline. You know my thoughts on that. Yeah. <laughs> that I am I, I'm, I'm like, very much not on board. I, I'd rather have a TC storyline. Because so Rick has plenty of storylines, but I feel like TC, and I, I, I feel like I keep saying it, um, around the season, TC has a suspicious lack of storylines, and I Give that man some love, please. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I'm on board with Rick's storyline if TC gets one. Yeah. I see where you're going with that. Because yeah. it is an ensemble show, so... Balance. They, People give they need balance. to be a balance. Um, I, get, I get why Magnum gets more storylines than Higgy, because the show's literally without Magnum. <laughs> yeah, Magnum. <laughs> and even in the original, Higgins was a big part of it, so... Higgins for some time potentially Mr. Masters, which obviously yes. doesn't work in this one. No, they've debunked that. Well, because uh, they both alone by the fact that she's not a guy. Well, also, what well, she could have used it as a pen name, um, but also sure. the fact that we've seen him arrive on TC's chopper and both of them are standing there. So they both have actually seen Robin, where it, as in the original Magnum had never actually seen Robin. Yeah. So they we know have seen Robin. Yeah. Um, we have some episode titles. Um, all oh, of the latest one is so juicy. I love it so well, much. A lot of them have actually been juicy the last couple ones. So Almost all of them have been juicy. Like, yeah. really? So I don't know if we said it last time, but episode 9 is the Christmas episode. Um, and it's called You Better Watch Out, which comes from... Well, yeah, exactly. So that's not really, like, scary, but... That's the Christmas episode. Seriously? Um, Santa Claus is coming to town. Sounds like a threat. It could be. And in relation to that, um, we got a TV line scoop saying uh, something about Zach writing an episode. Uh, yeah, no. But, but 
That's not. That's I was, exci- I was excited for the other part right, right there. That's why I said. That's why I said something about blah blah. Um, and then it says very unrelated scoop. Magnum Santa Higgins yes. L, which uh, I am very excited about. Yeah, in relation, it, this was nothing against Zach, but I just got excited for the <laughs> Magnum Santa Higgy Elf, and uh, that's yeah. where the no comes from. Good on Zach, I but you. Magnum Santa Higgy Elf, and I, yeah. I can guarantee you that it will be adorable. Um, yeah, they will be adorable because I mean, yeah. I, I, no words. That's it. They're, it's yeah. adorable. Um, going back to episode titles. <clears throat> so, we don't know the episode title for 410. Um, the writers just said that it was to be confirmed. Uh, episode 11. If I should die before I wake. Dark, potentially. Lullaby. Comes from a lullaby. If I should die before It also I comes wake, from a Jordan Spark song. <laughs> yeah, th- that probably comes from the lullaby, too. Could be. Because that lullaby is fucking ancient. So. Or, there's... Good Night Prayer. It, it fucking exists in German, too, so. Huh? So that that's English. that. And now one that I am very curious about. Oh, oh yeah! Oh, found it today, actually. Episode 12 is Angels Sometimes Kill. Yeah, so, my mind went straight to my dream again, but that's a different Yeah. Story. My my mind immediately went to Higgins killing somebody. Well, yeah, but you said Higgins killing yeah. somebody. Um, uh, yeah, that, that was my immediate thought, too, quite honestly, because... <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't know what else to say, <laughs> quite honestly. Um... It, it did. It did it's cross these my mind. Blonde locks. Meh. <laughs> um. Do we? Did we have all the? Bah, 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 bah. Uh, I don't know if, again if we mentioned it, but the writers had said that at the moment there's going to be twenty episodes. Um. When I tweeted them asking, they said. I said, hey, Magnum PI writers, any updates on how many episodes we will get this season? They said, at the moment, dot, 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 20. Yeah, Which, I hate when people use ellipses as such a, yeah. why? I mean, to me, it makes sense that it would be 20, because when it wasn't a COVID season, that's exactly how many we got. In, ep- in season one and season two, it was 20 episodes. It, it would concern me much more if they got more. Yeah. So... I, I would expect 20, even though they mm-hmm. used dot, dot, dot. Um, uh, yeah, but but here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Ellipses is bothering me, but I am also very aware of people that are older than me using them much more liberally than me. <laughs> it's There's this generational shift in how you see ellipses. Older generations see them as perfectly fine. Younger generations see them as passive-aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> truth. Um, and I think... <laughs> Which I just I just accused the guy running ma- the writer social media <laughs> to be old. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, we have no idea. <laughs> and here's but that's, I've been told the entire last weekend that people over 30 are old by my friends. I'm just like, thank you guys. That's really nice. Like, I'm getting old, I'm turning 30! Nah, you're not old. (laughs) You're so not old, though. No. I'm very, very, very much suffering from Peter Pan syndrome. (laughs) I am, my inner child is very much alive, thank you very much. And I love that. I mean, we're doing a fucking podcast about the TV show, Our, our inner children are fine. Oh, absolutely! The outer, the outer grown-ups are are not not fine. No, <laughs> not fine. Real, real life, Liz and Eve are not fine. I would <laughs> say. Realize, uh, inner baby Liz and Eve, they are. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. But yeah, <laughs> I just, I can just say what I did. Yesterday, after I got all my chores done and and did boot camp, 
or before I did boot camp, and after I get again, I wore a panda onesie and sat on my couch and played video games. So the inner Eve is the inner Eve child is fine. The outer grown up is not. Yeah, I I just want to say that without this fucking woman here, there's no way I would have made it through the week. Oh. She has I, been my fucking rock, and I, I fucking love her, and yeah. Love you too. And the same goes back to you. With you, without you and Rhea, I would have, I don't know how I would have made it through Thursday and Friday. Yeah. And I'm still not sure how to pull myself out of that pit, but hanging on. Um, yeah, that's why we need to be there for each other. And, I, like, this episode has been kind of heavy. Yeah. Um, but it, it's real. That's that's the point. It's it's something that is affects a lot of people, and it's it's very prevalent in today's society. So yeah, and and on that note, guys, be there for each other. It's don't don't pull each other down. I've seen some stuff on this fandom. I've seen some people call each other names and. I'm on it. If you want to call me these names, fine. I'm a sucker. So, so what? But don't fucking do this. Especially if you're one of these people who are like, oh, there's a lot of younger people in the fandoms. I can own this. I'm 30 years old. I'm fine if you call me names. I'm over 30. Um, but there, especially with the younger guys, just be kind to each other. For fuck's sake, if you have different opinions... Fine, accept them, move on. Hey, mm -hmm. I don't agree with you there. Okay, fine. I mean, you and I, you and I have differing opinions on things, but we've never been discussing it's towards so each other. It's so easy to say it. Oh, oh, I disagree there. This is how I see it. Yeah. Laid out it's our not... opinions. Okay, let's see how it turns out. Moving on. Yeah, it doesn't have to be disrespectful. Yeah, so. yeah, here's the thing. No name calling, and, and if you have someone who calls you names, don't, don't bother. If that's just, what they resort to, speaking of them, not you. Yeah. And so. very specifically, there's one person um, who's gotten really nasty anons on Tumblr, Thinking of the Belle, Margot. Mm hmm Fuck's sake, Anons are cowards. Yeah. You yeah. are it's fucking amazing for putting out stories. That's a very personal yes. thing. And no, your English is not the best. But guess what? If you look at your first stories and your stories now, you're constantly improving. We're all seeing that. You're amazing. And keep writing these stories. I mean, yeah. Listen to a coward who hides behind the Anon function. Yeah, just and you do you. Have, and they don't even have something real to say. Like nobody likes these stories. Not not even going like, hey, you're constantly missing the third person S, which is not true. I, that was just a random. <laughs> it's just a random example that came to my head. But that would be. Completely different thing. If you're, if you, if you're afraid to tell someone actual critique, and you're hiding behind the end and feature of being like, oh, you're missing the third person S because you're actually afraid of their reaction. That's a totally different ball game because that's respectful critique. You're actually critiquing something that the other person can attack, and be like, oh, I didn't know that. I can research it. I can insert it. This thing completely pointless and useless and mean and cyberbullying and mm -hmm. fuck's sake people why and and it's not easy to write no just putting it out there too like it even as a native english speaker and as a native english writer like i still don't write well you know like i still like personally like I have so much respect for her because, 
are like, I don't have the guts to post store like yeah to post stories at all you know so i honestly major props because i think i think she's doing a great job she is like, but here's the thing oh, writing 100%. is not it's not a skill you're born with it's not a talent writing is not a talent in the sense of oh you're born with this magical ability to write no you're not writing is a skill that's learned and she just decides to share the story, share her inspiration while learning. Sorry, but that's fucking amazing. And this turns into a hate fest on Annan's, rightfully so, yeah. though. If you, if you want to be disrespectful to others, why not do it off Annan? Yeah. See how well you fare. Yeah. Um, and it's a little bit of a love fest for Margaret. But honestly, <laughs> amazing stories. Read them, especially if yeah. AUs are your thing. They're not mine, so I'm mostly not reading them. But if AUs are your thing, go there. Do it. They're really good. Yeah. They're really good. They are. So, all that to say is take care of each other, guys. Yes. And always, like, I mean, I'm, like, I'm sure Eve will say the same thing, but if you guys ever want to talk, like, I'm always open. Yeah. And I'm just, like I said, I'm sure Eve is the same. Seriously, if you just want to talk about anything, it doesn't have to be related on the show, to the show or anything yeah. at all. Eve Trust on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, or, I don't even know my own new Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look it up for you. Yeah, I've got I've got a fandom Instagram that kind of is silent due to um, the the magic con thing, but yeah, Eve Trust and You Two Higgy Baby are always open. The podcast, yeah. um, and your yours is Magnum Fanfic Writer. Yes, yes, I I keep forgetting if there's the PI in there or not. Um, <laughs> So, uh, and, and the normal Magnum PA podcast channels, if you, if you want to slide into the DMs and are just like, oh my god, um, this person is obviously on the street, completely off topic, we're here, we're listening, we're trying yeah. to give you perspective. And we are a no judgment zone, <laughs> so you can tell us anything and won't be judged. Seriously, if, if I was to judge you, I would have to judge myself really hard. Because <laughs> I've done some weird shit in my life. Let's just say. Um, I'm just going to say it outright again. I got accidentally high at a convention and couldn't even climb two stairs. So I had to let myself fall forward into a fucking trailer. I'm not judging anyone. If, 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 if you get... If you get high by accident, not even on purpose. I didn't even do it on purpose. I did it by accident. I'm not judging anyone. Ever. I've been so. dumb as shit. <laughs> but, yeah. So, we are here. We will listen. Yep. And, yeah. Whatever you guys need. <laughs> Think of us as weird Ohana mamas. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Because <laughs> if one thing, if the, sh the, the, the episode show one thing, the Ohana matters. Yeah. And we all should be a uh, big Magnum P.I. Ohana. So, and be kind, it's be also respectful. okay to lean on each other. Yeah. That's what else the episode show us. Be kind, lean be on respectful, that Ohana. be there for each other, and... We'll see you next episode. Yeah.